and I'll, I'll just add a little bit about the Marshall Islands experience. And first, in answer to your question, I, I don't know of any country right now that is really promoting a plant-based diet for their entire population. I do know that um, in Israel, I believe they have the highest percentage of... Five and a half percent. Of, yeah. Um, it, so they're, they're increasing their, their interest uh, quite dramatically there. Uh, but in the Marshall Islands, the Marshall Islands are islands um, that are in the, in the Pacific between um, uh, Hawaii and Australia, about 2,300 miles southwest of Hawaii. And so they're very, very remote. And, you know, 100 years ago, there, there was no, uh, absolutely zero diabetes. Uh, and and uh, they lived off the land, of course, as, as uh, most Pacific Islanders did uh, at, at one time. And so for many generations, all they ate was the plants that they could collect from the island and the fish that they could catch with their spears or whatever from, from the sea, uh, from the ocean. And, and so what happened was um, uh, as their, uh, the main islands became overpopulated, so for example, the main island, Majuro, has 30,000 people on it. It's 3.7 square miles in area. Um, and it might sustain 500 or 1,000 people at most if they were living off the land. But now there are so many people there, they have to import foods. And because there are, there's almost no economy, uh, there, are, there are very few jobs, um, people don't have a lot of money. So as you can imagine, what they're importing is the cheapest food that they can bring in. So it's ramen noodles, uh, cheap white rice, and spam. Uh, they drink high fructose corn syrup. The number one drink is is called luau, and the number one ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. Mm. And 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 if that isn't d you know hard enough to hear, the children their favorite snack is dry ramen noodles. So you know ramen noodles are these white flour noodles deep fried with about 1,800 milligrams of sodium per per package, and they take these ramen noodles and to flavor them up, they eat them raw, but they sprinkle Kool-Aid powder on top uh, before Sounds eating like them. Sounds like my old diet. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I remember standing with a Marshallese person looking at this little, little person eating these ramen noodles, and bef after they sprinkled the Kool-Aid powder on, they sprinkled on this white powder. Oh, I'm thinking, what in the heck are they putting? Okay. Sugar, salt, and I said, what are they putting on the ramen noodles? And, the, and oh, that's a Sinamoto. Well, a Sinamoto, of course, is pure MSG. So, so you know, the people in the Marshall I Islands really couldn't have adopted a diet that would be more efficient at inducing diabetes than the diet they've adopted. And now they have one of the highest rates of diabetes on the planet. And so when, when I, I mean, honestly, I would guess, you know, well, over 50% of the adults have type 2 diabetes. The, you know, uh, while it's, uh, I shouldn't say that over 50% of the adults over 35 have type 2 diabetes. The children are lean as can be. They're, there's very little obesity among the children because they're so active. But as soon as they hit their adult years, they become overweight and probably close to 75, 80% are overweight. And, uh, and so what we did when we went in is introduced a plant-based diet and they can consume some fish if they can, because it's, you know, they're on a little island and that's their, their cultural food is coconut and fish, right? So, but we tell them if they do consume fish, it needs to be boiled or cooked in some way where they're not frying it. And, and so otherwise at the clinic where we're treating them, it's 100% plant-based. And so what we saw is, is a dramatic shift in, in blood sugars and, in di and we had several people reverse their diabetes completely, of course. And so the government started to get quite interested. And so I've been going back, I started going in 2006 and this year I went back just a couple of months ago and what I was invited to do was go there for three weeks and create a curriculum for grades kindergarten to six and train every teacher in the public schools to teach nutrition to the children. And so it's, it's, you know, it's encouraging, thank you very much, it's encouraging to see the interest. And in, as a matter of fact, they have just created a policy where it will be illegal 
to sell sweet drinks and fried snack foods within a certain parameter of any school. And the teachers who bring this stuff to sell to the students are no longer allowed to do that. So we're really starting to see change. And, and so I, I really believe that the, you know, we're, we, I don't know if we're quite at the tipping point, but we're sure getting close. And I think people are starting to catch on. Yeah. So that's very we, we encouraging. L last year we hit the question. top of the peak, we're heading. Now, yeah. we're heading. Yeah, lock them back. We should start a political party. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, um, does veganism or raw food diets help reverse uh, osteoporosis? Uh, and are there certain foods that are better had or not had regarding that? Vegan diets help osteoporosis in one specific way. You take away the animal food that has three basic bone and cell eroding acids in it. But really what reverses osteoporosis is weightlifting. If you're not willing to weightlift, I don't care what you eat, you're not going to get well. So I've worked with thousands of people who reversed osteoporosis and didn't worse do it, and it was about weightlifting at the end of the day. Not calcium. Right, I have, in my wellness center, we have a program for, for women who have osteoporosis. And we have, even have equipment in the office. We have um, equipment for heavy weightlifting that enables even for people who are frail to be able to support heavy weight on their body safely. And we have, a, um, and we have some vibration training machines, so we absolutely agree 100%. And the idea, and the, and the point that I'm making, additional point I'm making, is that your bones and muscles grow simultaneously. Your muscles, your bones don't get weak unless your muscles are also weak. And when you strengthen your muscles, you simultaneous, simultaneously strengthen your bones. And that osteoporosis and osteopenia is grossly overdiagnosed anyway. And a lot of fear is created that's needless. And you don't, you know, but basically, obviously, people get weaker as they age, and they should be more, they should, if they eat healthy and they age slower, which we talked about, aging slower, maintaining youthful vigor and being healthier, your muscles and bones stay stronger and you can stay more active as you get older and it all works synergistically. And, and just to recognize that, you know, a lot of people think osteoporosis is a dairy deficiency disease. <laughs> they, you know, it, it, it's, it's caused because you're not, <laughs> you're not consuming enough milk. But what you need to, to understand is that osteoporosis is a multifactorial disease. And I couldn't agree more with exercise the only people I've seen actually increase bone density as they get older are people that have increased physical activity. But what you do need to know is if you're becoming vegan and you're eliminating sort of our traditional calcium sources and traditional vitamin D sources, you need to be consuming a diet that provides the nutrients that do help to build strong bones. So you need enough calcium. In, in the Epic Oxford study, they found that vegans that consumed under 525 milligrams of calcium a day had over 30% more uh, an increased risk of, of fracture. In the Adventist Health study too, the Adventists are consuming over 900, the Adventist vegans are consuming over 900 milligrams of calcium a day. So their bone density, there's not a lot of, of difference between them and the meat eaters. Now the other thing you need to know is that we, years ago people used to say uh, more protein means that you're going to urinate more calcium out of your urine and increase your risk of, of fractures. Well, what we've learned since is that, yes, it's true that, that protein does increase urinary calcium excretion, but it also helps with calcium absorption. It helps you build stronger bones, and it's part of the bone matrix. So people eating plant-based diets need to get enough protein to keep their bones strong. And so this, the thinking of, you know, really limiting protein intake as a, definitely as a meat eater, but as a plant-based eater, you actually need to make sure you get enough protein. So there was a, a study, again, the Adventist Health Study, showing that women who consumed the most legumes had, I think it was 63% reduced risk of fractures. So it's, it's important to make sure your diet is well balanced. You've got a source of vitamin D. You've got your calcium, you've got your magnesium, potassium, all of these nutrients that contribute to building uh, strong bones. And then, of course, weight-bearing exercise. And the other thing I'd like to mention is my mom um, was always, she grew up on a farm. She was always a fairly big uh, dairy consumer. 
And, but always physically active. When she was 50 years old, she developed osteoporosis and she's been uh, very good about her exercise and so, so she's been maintaining her bone density reasonably well. But when I hit, um, it was just around, I think, 49 years of age or so, about 10 years ago, um, I was, um, my doctor said, you know, you've been vegan for over 20 years, your, your mom uh, has osteoporosis, you are a slim, Caucasian female, you're at high risk. You don't, you know, you're not, you're, you know, your diet may be low. In so anyway, he said, let's do bone density. And my bone density came back. When I went to his office to get my results, he opened my chart and his jaw dropped. <laughs> um, he said, your bone density in your uh, femur is two and a half standard deviations above norm for your age. They couldn't plot it on the chart. There was an arrow at the top of the chart. And, and, and I think one other spot, spine or whatever, was two standard deviations above norm for my age. And he said, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, your bones are made of steel, just <laughs> keep doing it. And, and what I'm doing is exercise from the time I was a teenager has always been a very significant part of my life. So I, I you know, to me it's like, eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom. You need to keep moving and keep physically active every day of your life, at, that you're able to do that. And so, I mean, even when I, the day I delivered, my, my, my children are 33 and 30 years of age, but the day I delivered my children, the day I delivered my son, I swam a mile before I delivered him. So... <laughs> he wanted to come out after that. You know, you know what, the lifeguards... <laughs> <laughs> the, the lifeguards were so scared that baby was <laughs> going to pop out in the water. But anyway, and I think that, that what I'm trying to say is just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're at higher risk for osteoporosis. It, there are so many factors that come together to, to help you build strong bones. And, that, and, that's, and I'm really, this is a great conversation, and I'm agreeing, and it brings to the point to make the good point that not all vegan diets are created equal. You bet. And there are some diets that are proposed, these super low fat, high starch carbohydrate diets, like macrobiotic type diets or potato based diets, that people aren't getting adequate calcium. They're not taking in enough green vegetables, not getting adequate protein with the beans and the hemp seeds and, the, and, the, and, the, and all the other things we eat, the broccoli and the, that, are, that are giving us adequate protein. And as we age, our ability to assimilate calcium and protein go down. Yeah. Whereas that's where I think that we're on the same page here, that we're eating a diet that's high in vegetables, we're using beans, we're using seeds, we're using things that supply us with what we need, and we're getting a variety of nutrients, a good range of nutrients humans need, and we're also getting the necessary minerals and the necessary proteins we need, especially as we age. Yes. On this type, on this type of diet, which I call, call a nutritarian diet, which is essentially what we're, all, what we're advocating here. I'm just calling it something different, but it's a similar, you know. So don't hang your hat on, on medications like Fosimax. Remember when that first came out? All the women, all the older women, especially at our gym, they said, heck with this, I have to stand for half an hour and I have so much pain, I can't take it. So they'd rather go to the gym and lift weights and, and keep themselves strong that way. And I did deliver in water. I had water birth. <laughs> yeah, so now the, the, the thing is, of course, we, we keep ourselves with a high protein. This is the highest protein diet that you can find, the highest nutritious diet. So, but you can add protein. No way, no way, okay? Whey uh, um, it spikes your insulin even more than meat. It, it's you know what whey is, right? Yeah, whey protein. Oh. So you choose some good uh, sprouted uh, uh, proteins, um, uh, fermented rice protein and so on, and you can uh, substitute that you can have that with your exercise if you want to uh, pump up a little more. The Hippocrates, the Hippocrates diet is really an incredibly high protein diet. Just the sprouts alone. they have been broken down from complex proteins to amino acids that are usable by the body. When I was a macrobiotic, and I helped Michio Kushi write the Macrobiotic Way book, uh, around the same time I was really, uh, I think that's probably why I learned as much as I did. Harvard did a study on the macrobiotics. They went and wanted advocacy from Harvard and they found out that they had a much higher incidence of osteoporosis, tooth decay, etc. because of what Joel just said, that 
these incredibly high carbohydrate diets with very low protein and very low calcium. The only greens they had, they cooked to death in that diet. And remember, they discovered originally calcium where? Green leafy vegetables. Thank you.